Hi guys, so we are going to be doing the 3.03 Solution Formation Lab. Um, we're going to start with an introduction and some background information. Several factors affect a substance's rate of dissolving or dissolution rate. In this lab exercise, you will alter two factors as you create solutions. You will also apply the concept of collision theory to understand the significance of your results. Factors such as temperature and surface area can influence the rate of solution formation. Temperature and surface area can influence the rate at which a solid solute dissolves. This concept may seem easy to understand, but it is an important one for chemists who need to characterize the relationship between temperature and dissolution and between particle size and dissolution in many types of lab procedures. When salt dissolves in water, for example, the temperature of the water and the surface area of the salt crystals influence the rate at which the salt dissolves. The knowledge that dissolution can be explained in terms of particle collisions is called collision theory. This theory states that the particles that make up any solute or solvent are in constant motion. When solvent particles collide with solute particles, dissolution is the result. Suppose you want to sweeten some lemonade. Which would sweeten it faster? A lump of sugar or a spoonful of granulated sugar? Would a sugar cube dissolve faster in hot lemonade or cold lemonade? If you know the answer, well, let's go ahead and see if you're right in the lab that we're going to do. After having made this observation, you can ask the question, what are the factors that affect how fast a substance dissolves? In this experiment, we will first dissolve table salt in water noting how long it takes salt of different particles to dissolve. Then we will explore the time needed for salt to dissolve in water at different temperatures. All right, so for experiment number one, we're gonna be looking at the effects of particle size on solution formation. Um, I have everything set up. I have labeled the vials one, two, and three. And we're gonna start out by measuring our amounts and different types of salt to go in each vial. So in vial one, we are it's already five grams. For the rest, we're gonna to have to measure out the five grams, but we put it there and I already teared it. So we're gonna put this in vial one. In vial two, we're gonna measure out five grams of coarse grain salt. We're at two, three, four, and not quite five. Okay, so we measured out five grams of the coarse green, which is vial two. Vial one was um, the pellet salt. And in number three, we are going to put um, fine grain salt, five grams of that also. And then almost five grams, okay that in here so vial three is the fine grain salt okay so for the next part we are going to add 20 milliliters of tap water into each vial so that way that is a constant and remains the same for all three of them. And I'm just gonna measure it using a beaker. We 
we are going to put the lids back on. So number one again was the pellet. Number two is the coarse grain salt. And number three is the whoop, fine grain salt. And now we're going to allow ourselves up to 45 minutes to see um, at what point they dissolve. So I will see you back in 45 minutes and we will report back on the outcome. Okay, so it has been 45 minutes and we are back to see our observations on what has dissolved or if anything has dissolved. And if you look at vial one with the pellet, this is what it looks like. You're gonna record your observations in the chart. It will look similar to this. This is vial two with the coarse grain salt. And then this is vial three with the fine grain salt. Okay, so for part two, we are going to look at the effect of particle size on solution formation with agitation, meaning we are going to shake the vial. I've pre-measured out our five grams of each again, so we're gonna start with five grams of the pellet salt, five grams of the coarse grain, and then five grams of the fine grain. And we're also gonna still add 20 milliliters of water. So I'm gonna start by adding the salt to each that I've pre-measured out. And now we're gonna add the 20 milliliters of water to each one. So our next step is we are going to, basically our goal is to measure and record the length of time it takes for the salt to dissolve completely in each vial. And so I am going to agitate this and we're gonna revisit this in two minutes to begin with. Okay, so it has been two minutes of agitation on the vials and this is the chart that we are looking at. So we are wanting to see our observation at two minutes then we're going to check it again at five minutes of agitation and then six minutes. So right now vial one with the pellet looks like this. Vial two with the coarse grain salt looks like this. You can still see some at the bottom a little bit. And then vial three with the fine grain salt is getting pretty clear there is still some in the bottom there and now I'm going to agitate that for another uh, three minutes and we'll check this again at five minutes okay so we are at five minutes now and I'm going to take a look at the vial number one now with the pellet this is your observation vial two with the coarse grain salt you can still see particles floating around there. It is dissolving some. And then vial three is getting pretty clear. Oh, there you go, it's a little bit better, but still not fully dissolved. Okay, so we are going to now revisit this in another two minutes. No, one minute and then we will record our final observations. 
Okay. We are now at a total of six minutes of agitation, and these are our final observations. Here is vial number one with the pellet. As you can see, um, it is not fully dissolved. Vial number two with the coarse grain. It is almost dissolved. You can still see a little bit there. And then vial number three with the fine grain has nearly fully or if not fully dissolved. You can see how clear it is there. And then we will now be moving on to our final section, part three. Okay, so part three, the last thing we're gonna look at is the effects of temperature on solution formation. And you will have a chart that looks like this. And we are going to, I've already pre-measured this out. So I've got five grams of coarse grain salt in each vial. This time we are keeping that as a constant. And the first one we're gonna look at is the coarse grain salt with ice water. And so we're gonna add 20 milliliters of the ice water to the vial. So, and I've got the ice water here. Vial one, put the lid on. So I am going to shake this for five seconds every minute until the salt has completely dissolved. And then we're going to observe and record the time needed for the salt to dissolve, okay? Okay, so for vial number one with the ice water, it took approximately six minutes for it to dissolve. So in our chart over here, I'm gonna record six minutes. And then the next one we are going to do, we're gonna move on to salt, to the salt and room temperature water. Okay, so in vial two, we still have coarse grain salt and we're going to add our 20 milliliters of room temperature water. And then we are gonna do the same process. We're going to see with shaking it for five seconds or agitating it for five seconds per minute, how many minutes it takes it to fully dissolve. And I will be back with the results. Okay, so for vial number two with the salt and room temperature water, it took approximately it is dissolved now. Um, it took approximately four minutes for it to fully dissolve. So we're gonna record that in our chart. And the last one we're gonna look at for part three is the coarse ground salt with hot water. Okay, so again, I've pre-measured out the amount of salt and I have hot water and we're gonna add 20 milliliters of the hot water to the vial. And then we're gonna use the same process where it's gonna be agitated for uh, five seconds per minute and we're gonna see how long it takes vial three to dissolve. Okay, so for vial three, it was approximately two minutes for it to dissolve. You can see here. It's fully dissolved. So record your observations. And again, it was two minutes and I have recorded that here in the chart. And now you're gonna be moving on to your discussion questions and think about what we've talked about in class as far as kinetic energy and heat. And that's it.